Seganeng to talk to us before we open the platform for thanksgiving, for testimonies. Amen, Pastor. Thank you very much and uh, good morning to all the participants on this platform and um, those of us who took the time to wake up and to worship together. And I believe that today is a time that we have set aside to say thank you to the Lord. And without wasting a lot of time, I know that my time is very limited. So I will go straight into it. I'm going to read for us from the book of Genesis chapter 28. And I want to read from verse 10. Um, you will forgive me. I read a lot of verses, but I will speak as little as possible. But before we do that, let us close our eyes as we pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for this opportunity and privilege of prayer. We thank you for waking us up this morning. Many of us probably even had our alarms set. But we know, Lord, that it is not the noise of the device, but it is the wooing of the Holy Spirit that whispered in our ears and said, it is time to pray. Thank you, Lord, for waking us up and we Pray that as we study your word, you study our lives. So that, Lord, if there be any sin found in us, you may cleanse us from all unrighteousness and preserve us for your kingdom. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Genesis chapter 28, verse 10. Now Jacob went out from Beersheba and went toward Haran. So he came to a certain place and stayed there all night because the sun had set. And I think every time we speak about the night experience of our lives, I was telling someone yesterday that it, it almost feels like the night does not want to end these days. It almost feels like the night is overextended. And when things are tough, it seems like a minute is an hour. And an hour feels like days. And I can only imagine how long this night was for Jacob. But here's what I love about the Lord. Because God says, so he came to a certain place and stayed there all night because the sun has set. And he took one of the stones of that place and put it at his head. And he lay down in that place to sleep. I want to assure you today that the good thing about the Lord is that even as the night becomes longer than it should be, even as it seems like things are lasting longer than they should last, God provides us a stone to put our head on and he gives us sleep. And I want to assure us today that we ought to be thankful to God that even in the midst of the night that seems unending, even when trouble comes knocking on our door and it seems to be unabated and goes on and on and on and on, God gives us sleep. The Bible says, then he dreamed and behold, a ladder was set up on the earth. And its top reached to the heavens, and there the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, your father, your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie, I will give to you and your descendants. Also your descendants shall be as the dust of the earth. You shall spread abroad to the west and the east, to the north and the south, and in you and in your seed, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Behold, 
I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land for I will not leave you until I have done what I have spoken to you. And this morning I want to say to us, brethren, I don't want to even read any further. You can go read that text on your own. But I want to say to us, just as a songwriter writes a song, I just feel like something good is about to happen. I just feel like something good is on its way. He has promised that he'd open all of heaven. And brother and sister, it could happen any day. But I want to say this to you, when God's people humble themselves and call on Jesus, and they look to heaven expecting as they pray, I just feel like something good is about to happen. And brother and my sister, this could be the very day. And I think we have every reason to be grateful for what the Lord is about to do. He says to Jacob, listen here, Jacob, I know you are running away. I know you are a fugitive. I know you have taken that which I have promised your own way. I know you have stolen the promises of heaven, the blessings. I mean, who steals promises from heaven? He says, I know you have taken that which I have promised you without my permission. I know all the wrong things you have done. And I know how you have even prayed without believing what you have prayed for. But don't worry about that. I am here to reassure you of the promises, not just the ones I've made to you, but I want to know that, I want you to know that I have not changed. I promised your father, Abraham, your grandfather, and I promised your father, Isaac, but I'm here to reassure you today that the promise still stands despite who you are. And I think that most of the time we want to pine over who we are, but I want to tell you today that God always sees us for who he has made us to be and not what we have turned out to be. He sees us for the potential that he has put in us and created us to possess. And many of us downplay the potential that God has created us for because we are more worried about the occasional misdeeds and the occasional good deeds. But I want to say to someone this morning, God is here to reaffirm his promises. He says, I will not let you go until I have done that which I have promised. And you see, sometimes we think that God is willing to let us go any moment to give up on us. But he says, I will not let you go until I have done that which I have promised. You see, the promises of God are not to be meant to be left unachieved and unattended. They are meant to be fulfilled. And God says to you, I will not let you go. You see, even before the wrestling match in prayer of, of Jacob and God, the physical one, even if you so wish, God had already told him what ought to happen when he wrestles, that he must not let go because God himself is not willing to let go. And I think we ought to be thankful for these promises of heaven, that our God is a God who does not let go. And therefore, we ought to be people who do not let go. We ought to be people who hold on with everything we have because we know that the one who is holding us, even if we were to let go, he is still holding on to us. And he says, and I think this is what I love the most and I shared it with some church members yesterday in the evening. The Lord says, I will bring you back to this land that you are fleeing from. And I want to say to us this morning that God 
will bring us back. Now I know that for some of us, this world seems like a miserable place, a place that has taken everything from us, that has taken the best of the best from us and left us almost, almost destroyed and in despair. But I want to assure you, the Lord says he will bring us back to this very planet. He will recreate it for us. He will purify it with fire. And when he brings us back, he will bring us back in a better shape than before. But I want to say this to you, my brothers and sisters. I just feel like something good is about to happen. Don't let the dark cloud overshadow the promises of heaven. Something good is about to happen. My brothers, my sisters, it could be this very day. Praise the Lord for the potential of a better tomorrow. And brothers and sisters, that better tomorrow could be this very day because he says, behold, I come quickly and my reward is with me. Jesus is coming again. God bless you all. Amen. Let us close our eyes as we pray. Our Father in heaven, we come before you this morning grateful and thankful that even in our darkest hour of the night, you provide us with sleep. We thank you, Lord, that you are the kind of God you are, the one who does not let go of his people, the one who keeps coming back to reassure us of his presence. Lord, we thank you that we have a God who does not abandon his people, but abides with his people. Father, we thank you that there are storms out there, that there are, the winds are blowing and bashing against the vessel, but you have given us an assurance yet again that all will make it out safe from the ship. Though the ship may be wrecked and destroyed and hit against the stones of life. Father, we thank you that you are patient, merciful, kind, long-suffering. You do not sleep nor slumber. When we are sleeping, you are perfecting your plans for our lives, for us. Father, today we just want to say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for the promise of a better future. And we know we can bank that promise because we know the one who holds tomorrow. We pray, Lord, that you give us a spirit of gratitude, spirit of contentment, where we are able to pause for a minute and count our blessings and name them one by one and be amazed by your goodness in our lives. Thank you, Lord, for listening to this prayer. Thank you, thank you, thank you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.